Hello people, in this video we want to look at ethmoidal polypi like nasal polypi under that. So basically nasal polypi are non-neoplastic masses of this edematous uh, mucosa, the mucosa of the nose or the sinus. So basically there are two types of nasal polypi like you have anticoanal or the Killian's polyp and then you have the bilateral ethmoidal polyp. Okay, so in this video what are we looking at guys? Bilateral ethmoidal polyp only we are looking at. In the previous video, we have looked at the differences between the anticoanal polyp and the ethmoidal polyp. So, ethmoidal polyp basically from where does it come? From ethmoidal sinus. It kind of grows anteriorly, right? There will be multiple and it will be bilateral. So, like bunch of grapes kind of thing, right? And uh, this is usually an allergic etiology and in adults you will see this. So, this is what we are looking at now, right? In this video. <clears throat> and they grow anteriorly. Almost everything is AAA in this. Adult, allergy, anteriorly they grow. But it is E, ethmoidal polypi. This one is E, anthrocoinal polyp. Okay, guys, so you understood, right? This is what we will be looking at. <clears throat> These will recur also if you remove also because there are so many multiple and all that. Now, if you remove also, they grow again. Okay. So, anyways, this is the basic difference. Let us look at this. From where are they coming? Ethmoidal uh, sinus. Here in the green, you can see. <clears throat> From the ethmoidal um, sinus, you will get this multiple polypi, <clears throat> small ones. And how do they grow? Anteriorly. They can also come from uncinate process, middle turbinate, middle meatus. They can come from anywhere, not just ethmoidal sinus. Uncinate process, middle turbinate, middle meatus, all this it can come from. Okay. So, look at this diagram here. The multiple ones, what you are seeing here, these are the ethmoidal sinus polyps. What you are seeing down here is a maxillary sinus polyp that kind of grows backward. So, the anthracoanal polyp grows posteriorly. This one grows anteriorly, right? Anyways, so... Uh, why does it happen? Basically, it's allergy, various diseases they are trying to explain here. Chronic rhinosinusitis, okay. So, non-allergic rhinitis with eosinophilia syndrome. There are some nares. So, this is what you will have to write. Non-allergic rhinitis with eosinophilia uh, syndrome is a form of chronic rhinositis associated with polypi. Okay. Patients with asthma, they can have this ethmoidal polyposis, okay. Aspirin intolerance, some people who have this aspirin intolerance, what will they have? This Samter's triad, Samter's triad, some specific words they are telling here, right guys, if you just write aspirin intolerance, not enough, Samter's triad, which has nasal polypi, asthma and aspirin intolerance, so all these three is it, asthma, aspirin intolerance and this nasal polypi, okay. Okay, guys, so uh, cystic fibrosis also, some people who have cystic fibrosis can have uh, a polypi. This is due to abnormal mucus. They will have abnormal mucus, abnormal, abnormal mucus. Which color shall I put for this? Abnormal mucus they will have. Who people? Who people who have cystic fibrosis? Got it, right? Very good. Move on. Allergic fungal sinusitis. So, this is mostly, you know, the ethmoidal polyp. Let's focus here. What are we looking at? Ethmoidal polyp. It's mostly allergic condition, right? Multifactorial, they said. So, allergic fungal, fungal sinusitis. I don't like this fungal thing. Fungal sinusitis. Then, Cartagener syndrome, guys. Cartagener syndrome. What is this? Consists of bronchiectiasis, sinusitis, situs inverses, and the ciliary dyskinesis. So, the cilia are not moving properly. So, what and all these people will have? Situs inverses. I have heard this somewhere. I think this is something like the dextrocardia, right? But here they are telling total, everything is reversed. Right atrium has come off on this side. Left atrium has gone off this side. See, basically they are still calling it as right. Though the right has come on the right, left side. Okay. Right atrium is on this side. Okay. Liver has come off on this side. Okay. So, you got it, right? So, these people will have, this is called as what? Cart, cart, Cartagener syndrome. Okay. Young syndrome. Guess will you be able to remember all these names? Young syndrome. It consists of sinopulmonary disease and azoospermia. Okay. Then, churg strauss syndrome. churg strauss syndrome. Consists of asthma, fever, eosinophilia, vasculitis and granuloma. Well, these names are too difficult to remember, right? But just remember, it's the same thing. Asthma, eosinophilia, all this we saw, right? The nasal mastocytosis. Again, this is chronic rhinosin, uh, chronic rhinitis. Let's focus. What are we looking at? This nasal mastocytosis. Mast, mast cells will be more. So, you can remember the nasal mucosa is infiltrated with mast cells and few eosinophils. Okay. Mast cells will be there. Okay. But, 
but there will be no ig ig levels are normal allergy everything is normal okay so i think this is really difficult to remember what you people say how can you even remember all these things asthma aspirin intolerance is already i forgot samters tried chronic rhinosinusitis <coughs> cystic fibrosis who the hell can remember cystic fibrosis allergy i can remember fungal sinuses what is the scarta jenner syndrome that um, situs uh, inversus ciliary dyskinesis bronchiectasis young syndrome azoospermia what these people have very few motile sperms is it what is azoospermia see this young syndrome is very uh, weird he is so young but semen has no sperms okay waste young guy churg strauss syndrome again asthma fever eosinophilia nasal mast mastocytosis more mast cells will be there in the nasal mucosa but there will be ige levels and all are normal great if you can remember these okay let's try to recollect and say the causes of uh, bilateral ethmoidal polyposis chronic rhinosinusitis monalgic rhinitis with eosinophilia syndrome nares asthma aspirin intolerance santis triad cystic fibrosis allergic fungal sinusitis cartagena syndrome chronic rhinosinusitis non-allergic rhinitis with eosinophilia syndrome nares asthma okay guys if you can aspirin remember, intolerance okay, then let's move on santis <coughs> triad what exactly happens cystic fibrosis particularly in the region of allergic the fungal sinusitis and middle term cartagena syndrome due to collection of extra young syndrome as uspermia chug strauss First syndrome all, extra cellular nasal mastocytosis right? because of it it is becoming edematous the mucosa this will cause polypoidal change polypi which are sessile in the beginning become pedunculated due to gravity and excessive sneezing they will be sessile in the beginning and then they become pedunculated pedunculate means they'll get a stalk so initially there'll be something like this and then they will go due to gravity they'll go on becoming like this and they'll get pedunculated they'll have this stalk peduncule peduncle they'll have where are they growing anteriorly you can see bilateral <coughs> bilateral ethmoidal polypi you can see right so pathogenesis you saw so what comes first in pathogenesis extracellular fluid okay then edema then extra cellular fluid edema then polyp polyp so extra cellular fluid mucosa will get get uh, edematous and polyp okay so initially it will be sessile then it will become pedunculated guys can we move on now pathology we're talking about the pathology here guys so look at this there is uh, what what pathology they are explaining here <clears throat> initially there will be ciliated columnar epithelium so columnar epithelium with cilia will be there this is green why why we made it green because this is what is normal then it will undergo metaplasia and then it will become what squamous type transitional to squamous type it is becoming okay so this is squamous type of epithelium <coughs> because of exposure to atmospheric irritation that's why it's all this happening allergy right so the submucosa will show intracellular spaces filled with serous fluid some serous fluid and all is there here okay and then what will happen eosinophils are coming in here and some round cells are also coming some eosinophils and round cells are coming so all this polyp is nicely developing okay so did you get it guys so basically some metaplasia you understood right ciliated columnar epithelium to squamous type very good <clears throat> then it will be, sessile will become pedunculated where did we see that that we saw there okay there here what and all you will have eosinophils remember eosinophils will be there some serous fluid and all that extracellular fluid they said right some fluid is coming okay here there will be multiple polypi remember look at this photo here so they're showing here endoscopic view of multiple nasal polypi can you see multiple nasal polypi here to me it looks more like a worm is there or something what do you say guys okay anyways um, multiple nasal polypi always arise from the lateral wall of the nose usually from the middle meatus okay common sites are uncinate process the bulla ethmoidalis osteo of sinuses middle surface and edge of middle turbinate okay so they always arise from somewhere on the top they saying it never arises from the septum or the floor of nose it's coming from lateral wall okay blame the lateral wall guys 
whom will you blame lateral wall lateral wall so where, what are they all are they saying from the lateral wall right but they are telling middle turbinate uncinate process middle meatus bulla ethmoidalis all this they are telling right what are they telling here from the lateral wall of the nose usually from the middle meatus oh okay from the middle meatus okay so middle meatus is below this middle turbinate right so from here lateral wall there from there it will come i think like this multiple polypi but it should come from it can come from ethmoidal sinus or anywhere else also isn't it okay common sites are uncinate process bulla ethmoidalis ostea of sinuses medial surface and mid edge of middle turbinate okay they almost never arise from the septum or the floor remember they never arise from septum or the floor of the nose we'll write this never arise from the septum or the floor of the nose okay symptoms what will be the symptoms in these people guys so uh, guys what are we looking at uh, do you want a break see we have seen the pathogenesis how these multiple um, ethmoidal polyps are formed etc guys let's see if it is developed then what symptoms these people will have usually in adults we already told you this nasal stuffiness nasal obstruction main symptom okay this is the presenting symptom okay so nasal obstruction is the presenting symptom partial loss or total loss of sense of smell will be there loss of smell because of all these polyps headache will be there because of the sinusitis there will be some headache i hate this headache headache is what i hate okay otherwise if it grows who really cares that much but nasal obstruction is slightly bothersome but headache will be more bothersome i think what what do you think so there will have they will have some nasal discharge this is watery nasal discharge why because allergy right it is going to be serous fluid and what you see sneezing will be there why sneezing this allergy 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 okay mass protruding from nostril you saw it goes anteriorly right guys very good so these are the symptoms so what and all you will see nasal obstruction loss of sense of smell headache sneezing watery discharge mostly in adults mass protruding from the nostril signs as a doctor what will you see in anterior rhinoscopy or endoscopic examination you will see polypi which appear smooth glistening grape like masses often pale in color you already saw the photo bring it back here this one <clears throat> so this is what you will see on anterior rhinoscopy endoscopic view multiple polypi pale grape like they will be sessile or pedunculated they can be sessile or pedunculated sessile or pedunculated you uh, uh, probe them and they will not will uh, bother they don't care you just probe them no pain nothing they don't bleed also great they do not bleed often they are multiple and bilateral <clears throat> obviously we told you it is multiple grapes like small bilateral yeah we know that long standing cases present with broadening of nose and increased intracanthal distance so these people for a long time they will have uh, this uh, polyps then what will happen the nose will become broad and this intercanthal uh, uh, this distance also will become more understood guys broad nose broad nose intercanthal distance also more okay then what are we looking at signs okay long standing cases will present with broadening of nose increase intracanthal distance <clears throat> a polyp may protrude from the nostril it can protrude and it can appear pink and uh, vascular stimulating neoplasms stimulating simulating simulating a neoplasm it may look like a neoplasm is growing out of your nose scary scary just looks like that but it isn't isn't it simulating a neoplasm it's not a real one nasal cavity cavity focus guys what are we looking at ethmoidal polypi very good but what in that in that we are looking at signs yeah so nasal cavity may show purulent discharge due to associated sinusitis oh that can be purulent discharge that means there's infection right but this is more like an allergic condition probing of solitary ethmoidal polyp may be necessary to differentiate it from hypertrophy of the turbinate you have to differentiate it from hypertrophy of trophy of the turbinate very important guys we we'll have to see whether the uh, this is a polyp or there is a hypertrophy of the turbinate or a cystic middle turbinate okay you have to differentiate it from these two conditions differentiate it from hypertrophy of the turbinate or cystic middle turbinate that's it we look, we have we are done with the signs of what ethmoidal polyp very good 
now what else is left diagnosis clinical examination itself is enough you can do computed tomography ct scan of paranasal sinuses you write all that okay x ray and all you can write work but they are not talking about x ray so you should do computed tomography because you want to see mucus and mucus membrane and all that right yeah you can exclude bony erosion and ex, uh, and uh, neoplasia so you can exclude what exclude bony erosion and neoplasia and all you can exclude sometimes there can be malignancy underneath whoopsie guys there can be malignancy under this innocent polyp which is pale and transparent and etc especially in people who are above 40 you should do histological examination in suspected cases okay guys histological examination will you do if you suspect malignancy under this polyp especially people above 40 very good and then uh, ct scan will help you to plan the surgery also very good so ct scan will tell you about bone erosion metastasis neoplasia malignancy underneath ct scan can also help you plan the surgery treatment how will you treat guys we are almost at the end don't worry just the treatment conservative treatment they may revert to normal by then so good right just give some anti histaminics and you control the allergy they may revert to normal short course of steroids you can give guys short course remember short course of steroids <clears throat> in especially people who cannot tolerate anti histaminics or those with asthma or polypoidal nasal mucosa okay you can give steroids this may also prevent recurrence after surgery so this can also help in preventing recurrence contraindications to steroids don't use steroids if they have hypertension peptic ulcer diabetes because what will happen it's immunosuppressive these conditions are already immunosuppressive pregnancy tuberculosis yeah so don't give steroids okay contraindications to use steroids i would simply say hypertension diabetes pregnancy tuberculosis peptic ulcer okay then conservative over now we have to do surgery surgery which surgery you will talk about obviously our very famous endoscopic sinus surgery right what else do we talk about in life whenever we come to sinusitis everything we will talk about endoscopic sinus surgery fss functional endoscopic sinus surgery very good this fess surgery itself we have a separate video you look at that okay so they will uh, uh, what um, remove some bones okay small bones and then they will make sure that uh, they will drain all the uh, sinuses they can remove some ethmoidal cells also they will provide drainage and ventilation to the other sinuses okay but before the surgery prior to the advent of this endoscopic sinus surgery the following surgeries were done what are, what was what were they poly uh, polypectomy polypectomy okay that is nothing but removing the polyp polypectomy then intranasal ethmoidectomy so why are the nose uh, they are going an intranasal ethmoidectomy instead of that fess endoscopic they are not doing endoscopic they are going via this um, intranasal route and they are doing intranasal ethmoidectomy then you have extranasal ethmoidectomy they are going from outside also and doing oh my god then they have trans antral ethmoidectomy something to do with the maxillary antrum right you can look at this then you have um, they will go to the antrum by the caldwell cla- caldwell look uh, approach you know above your uh, teeth so they will go there and they will reach the antrum and then ethmoid air cells they will approach to the through the medial wall of the antrum this and all is old now who will do all this caldwell look surgery and all so these are all are very old surgeries okay so they are talking about ethmoidectomy 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 intranasal extranasal transantral this is polypectomy okay all these are old surgeries we are not going into the details then some important points to remember in case of nasal polypi if it is red and fleshy friable has granular surface if it is granular surface it can be malignancy especially in older people we already told you you should suspect malignancy below this nasal polyp simple nasal polyp can masquerade as malignancy um, can masquerade a malignancy underneath, underneath so there can be a malignancy underneath okay so you should subject it to histology then in a child it can be a glioma encephalocele or meningoencephalocele so you should always aspirate and you should examine whether it is csf what the okay glioma all this so it can contain csf you should examine for csf okay okay then 
careless removal of such polyp would result in CSF rhinorrhea. So if you just pull it out, then you will land up with CSF rhinorrhea. You will only be creating trouble. So don't, guys, don't pull the polyp. First, if you suspect that it can contain CSF and instead of, it could be an encephalocele or a meningoencephalocele, especially in a child, you should suspect this. Okay, people, if you carelessly remove, what will happen? CSF rhinorrhea, meningitis, you will land up, you will land up infecting that person. How sad. Right? How, which color you want for this? Careless removal of such polyp will lead to CSF, rhinorrhea, and meningitis. Okay, very good. Then let's move on. Multiple nasal polypi in children may be associated with with this word. Listen. Mucoviscidosis, cystic fibrosis. Mucoviscidosis, cystic fibrosis. Okay, especially in children, you can suspect the cystic fibrosis. Then epistaxis and orbital symptom, symptoms associated with polyp should always arouse suspicion of malignancy. So this person, uh, see this uh, face, okay. Now he's not only having this polyp in the nose, bilateral ethmoidal polyp or whatever polyp, he's also having ocular symptoms and he's also having some other symptoms. What are the other symptoms? Epistaxis. He's uh, having bleeding from the nose also, right? So he's having what and all, let's draw this guy again. He's having orbital symptoms, epistaxis. And he has this polyp. See, these things, they don't bleed even if you touch, right? Polyp and all that. So, definitely, if there is epistaxis and all, you should suspect malignancy, okay? If there are orbital symptoms also. So, guys, what did you understand in this entire slide? Suspect malignancy. Suspect malignancy. Okay. Suspect it to be an encephalocele, meningoencephalocele glioma. If it, you just check if it contains CSF, don't pull it out and then you land up with CSF, rhinorrhea and meningitis. That's really bad. Multiple, if it is there, it can be cystic fibrosis. So, check, check for cystic fibrosis. Then, if there is uh, orbital symptoms and epistaxis, always check malignancy. Okay, good. Malignancy only again they came to know. Okay. That's it, guys. Let's take a recap. In this video, we wanted to look at bilateral ethmoidal polypi. So, basically, in nasal polyps, you have so many types. You have anthrocoanal and bilateral. In this one, in this video, we are looking at bilateral ethmoidal polypi. We have already seen the differences between anthrocoanal and ethmoidal polypi. Ethmoidal polypi basically are an adult allergy cause. Multiple bilateral they will be and they will be coming usually from the ethmoidal sinus or the uncinate process or the middle meatus or the middle turbinate. They grow anteriorly and they present in the nerves. They are grape like masses. Even if you remove they can recur. How will you uh, work on this? Fi functional endoscopic sinus surgery. So from where are they coming? From the ethmoidal sinus. The cause is really difficult to see, but remember chronic rhinosinusitis, chronic rhinosinusitis, non-allergic rhinitis with eosinophilia syndrome, NERS, allergic fungal sinusitis. Then coming to asthma, you write asthma, then you write aspirin intolerance. Asamter's triad has both of these, sam asthma, aspirin intolerance and this ethmoidal polypi. Then cystic fibrosis, don't forget abnormal mucus, that's why these people will have um, ethmoidal polyp. Uh, then um, Carta-Jenner syndrome, where you have this... Um, Cytus inversus, then uh, Young syndrome has azuspermia, churg strauss syndrome has uh, asthma, fever, resnophilia, vasculitis and granuloma. Mast o cytosis, mast cells will be there in the mucosa, but IgE levels will be normal. All the best if you are writing that in the exam, it's so difficult to remember. So basically extracellular fluid, then the mucosa, nasal mucosa will undergo edema and then there will be polyp. Initially it will be sessile, then it will become pedunculated because of gravity, etc. Pathology basically... Ciliated columnar epithelium, metaplasia is undergoing, squamous metaplasia, it's becoming squamous because of uh, irritation, atmospheric exposure. Then uh, the submucosa, you will have intercellular spaces filled with serous fluid, there will be fluid, fluid, remember. Esnophils will be there, round cells will be there, okay. Then site of origin will be lateral wall, remember, it will never be from the floor or the septum, right. And the uh, uncinate process, bulla atmodalis, uh, ostea of the sinuses, middle surface uh, and edge of the middle turbinate, etc. Then uh, this can occur usually in adults, nasal obstruction they will have, they will have loss of sense of smell, either partial or total headache will be there. Watery nasal discharge, sneezing, mask protruding from the nostril. Then you, when you do anterior rhinoscopy, you will see grape-like masses, multiple uh, polypi, you will see sessile or pedunculated, they will be insensitive to probing, they don't bleed on touch. They can be multiple bilateral. There can be broadening of the nose and increased intracanthal distance. Uh, guys, broadening of nose, increased intracanthal distance, right? The face, its features itself can change. 
they can protrude from the nostril they can simulate a neoplasm you have to differentiate it from what hypertrophy of the turbinate and the cystic middle turbinate okay how will you do this uh, so clinical examination you can do you can do uh, computed tomography this will help you to uh, rule out bony erosion and the neoplasia etc uh, then um, so histological examination you should do if you were suspecting neoplasia the ct scan will also help you to plan the surgery then how do you treat it conservative you give antihistaminics so they may revert to normal you can give short course of steroids uh, to prevent recurrence also you can give steroids then the the best thing you will do is functional endoscopic sinus surgery which we have a separate video about and then before this uh, endoscopic sinus surgery you had polypectomy ethmoidectomy uh, intranasal ethmoidectomy extranasal ethmoidectomy and transantral ethmoidectomy that is the via the caldwell look approach now some important points that you have to remember is that it can be uh, if it is having granular surface if it is red fleshy the polyp it can be malignancy you should do histology and in a child it could be a glioma encephalocele or a meningo encephalocele which you, so you should always aspirate and check for csf if you just pull out the polyp and it contains csf you need to csf rhinorrhea and meningitis so be very careful uh, multiple um, um, polypi in children can also mean cystic fibrosis mucoviscidosis epistaxis and orbital symptoms if they are there again you should suspect malignancy remember you should suspect malignancy okay that's it about bilateral ethmoidal polyposis bye bye